In this video I'm going to talk you through a disassembly of a Porsche Boxster 3.2S engine. I bought this engine because I have another engine from a Porsche 996 which has a damaged crankshaft in it so I need a new crankshaft. Um, they're quite hard to get hold of because they do get scored, they have problems with them so they're very difficult to get hold of but the 3.4 litre Porsche 996 engine shares the same crankshaft as the 3.2 litre Boxster engine. So I bought this Boxster engine, I got it for a good price, it had intermixed problems with oil and water mixing together, which was a common problem early on with block porosity on the early engines, but on these slightly later ones it's most likely due to a cracked cylinder head. So I'm going to do a teardown of the engine in the video, and then at the end of the video I'll show you some pictures to show you the problem. Unfortunately the battery on my phone died towards the end of the video so the very last section of taking the block apart isn't shown. So I've mounted the engine on the engine stand. The first thing I'm removing here is the oil cooler and then moving on to removing the wiring loom and various other parts that are on top of the engine. So there's the parts for the breather system, the air oil separator and this engine also had the power steering pump still on it. So the starter motor has to come off as well and the wiring attached to the starter motor. So that's the wiring off. And then just the, the bracket for the power steering pump and remove the, the rest of the bracket from there as well. And then this is the vacuum parts. So the vacuum tank, as you can see on the left there. This is just removing the exhaust manifolds. So fortunately on this car, the exhaust manifolds came off easily and I unbolted the bottom manifold as well. Then starting on this this head, removing the coils, I've just tilted it over to give you a slightly better view, and then unbolting the, uh, that set is holding down the camshafts so I can remove the, the cover. So that just stops the camshafts moving up as the cover's removed. So undoing all the bolts on the cover, and then just need to release it, just tap it to get it off. It's all very nice and clean in there, which I was very relieved to see camshafts and journals are all in good condition then have to clamp down the um, that, that metal on there is just to hold the the solenoid together for the variable valve timing so the camshafts are out then remove the tappet chest that enabled me to have a look at the, the head so now I'm going to undo, undo the head there's four small bolts on the left hand side of the picture which need to be undone and then when they're done just move on to the main cylinder head bolts and with those are removed the head comes off and then just turn the engine over turn it round and then repeat the process on the other side so again take the coils off so they're just hex bolts for those and then again holding the camshafts down and then just going around and doing all of the bolts to remove the camshaft cover. Once the cover is off, the valve caps are removed. These have to be kept in, in order, they're specific to the engine. And they're here just taking the camshafts out. Remove the tappet chest. and then to take the head off, just remove the four bolts around the side and then move on to the center. So I've got to remove the sump and then also once the sump is off there's the oil pickup strainer and also the two return parts 
for the um, you see those two parts top and bottom on there those are the returns from the heads they're the air oil separators for the returns from the heads and then I've got to remove the oil pump so moving on to this end of the engine take the oil pump off take the oil pump housing off the oil pump is in very good condition there's no visible wear on it and then moving round to separating the block so there's about 24 bolts something like that all the way around so it's going round and loosening all of those and then once they're loose there is also an extra bolt on this side of the block and two bolts on the other side of the block which have to come out and then I'm just setting up there to to lift the block with the engine crane so I'm going to lift the top part off so unfortunately that's as far as the video goes which I'm sorry about that the battery went flat on my phone here are the parts after they've been taken off the engine and so you can see the two cylinder heads there and the camshafts I then proceeded to take apart the crankshaft carrier because I wanted to inspect the crankshaft because that was the main part that I was interested in unfortunately when I took that apart I saw that all of the the bearings were all in good condition no problems at all and also all of the the bearings all the big end bearings were also in good condition there was some wear on them some visible wear this engine had done 110,000 miles it's a very typical wear pattern to see on these but they're they're certainly not worn out there's no no problem with it as you can see just whizzing through each of these and here's the crankshaft after I've taken the crankshaft carrier apart so all the bearings are no no scoring no marks on them so they look to be absolutely perfect condition